folks, this is Karen Donovan from Donovan Realty, and today I just wanted to give a quick review of the things that happen when a buyer buys a home between the time that they go to contract and right before the closing. So this is a summary of post-contract to pre-closing. I get a lot of questions about this from my real estate clients, so I thought I'd make a little video and kind of give a quick summary. First of all, you will have already had your home inspection done, and once that that was acceptable to you and to the seller, you've worked out any details, then the attorneys will prepare the contracts. The, uh, generally speaking, the seller's attorney prepares the contract, sends it to the buyer's attorney. The buyer's attorney makes any changes, sends it back to the seller's attorney, and once that's done, then the buyer goes ahead and signs the contract, then the seller, uh, then the buyer sends their down payment back, and then the seller signs the contracts, and then you have a fully executed contract. So I'm going to talk about what happens from that point forward. At first, you will be making your mortgage application. You usually have to do that within five days of the time that you have a completed contract and your mortgage broker is going to want a copy of the contract. You will have chosen your mortgage broker already either by recommendation from a friend, a relative, or your realtor, or your attorney. And that mortgage broker will generally specialize in the type of loan that you need. Like if you're a first time home buyer and you're doing an FHA loan, they will be specialists in that area. If you're um, a, a, re, a, a buyer who's already bought a home before and you are putting down a substantial down payment, that would be a conventional loan and you might go to a different bank and you would have already shopped around a little bit for your in, you know, the best interest rates. It's not only the interest rates, it's the closing costs and the fees and also generally how that particular mortgage company works. You're going to want a company that's reputable, one that someone has used before and hasn't run into any snags that, you know, they get back to you and so on and so forth. Now, once you've made your application for a loan, um, the next thing that will happen is the bank is going to ask you for all kinds of paperwork. They may ask it for, again, they may ask you for your pay stubs, and then later on they're going to ask you again because they're out of date. Um, they may ask you for your bank statement several times. So, you know, those things are going in on. Um, you will have to provide your tax returns or they're going to send to the IRS for your tax returns. Make sure you file your taxes on time because that can screw up your deal. Um, and once that's all done, then at a certain point, the bank is going to order your appraisal. Now the bank nor we realtors have any control over which appraisal company is going to come. The way it works now is your name gets submitted into a pool and the, the appraiser who's on the list, whose turn it is, comes up. They may be local, they may be from upstate, they may be from not an area that knows where you're buying, but that's who you get. So the main thing is to make sure that your realtor provides that appraiser with some comparables. What I always do is, even if the appraiser doesn't want them, I say, oh, I'll have them ready for you, and I leave them with the seller or the seller's agent so that just in case they're not familiar with the area, they could see, yes, the house is, you know, substantiated by these comparables sales so that the appraisal will come in for the amount that you want to borrow. Okay, so now your appraisal's done, your credit report has been run, all your paperwork is in, all this goes before a committee. And this is called the underwriting committee and once it goes there, it stays there and they will look everything over with a fine tooth comb. They're going to make sure all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted, they may come back and ask you for more papers. I've had that happen right now. I have a deal where everything looked like it was in and then they went back and they wanted to look at something again. Because with everything that's gone on in the industry, they want to avoid any kind of fraud or problems. So 
that goes to underwriting. In the meantime, you are shopping, not for furniture, but for your homeowner's insurance. I know you thought I was going to say furniture. <laughs> but anyway, you want to shop around, ask friends, family. If, you're, if you were a former military or you had family that was, you could get uh, USAA insurance um, or talk to you know reputable people that you know and get a quote or two for homeowner's insurance. They may want to come out. They want, may want to look at the house. You want to make sure that it's standing and that it's safe and that it's got all the things that are worthy of them insuring it. So you want to have that all lined up and then be ready to probably make a payment for your first year's homeowner's insurance because that's going to be required at the closing. Uh, other items that will happen, your attorney will order the title report. Um, you will also possibly need to have a survey done. So those are all little things that take place. So everything's done now. You've been clear to close, and we have no control over that. The attorney doesn't have control over that. The realtor doesn't have control over that. That is strictly to do with the bank. Once they declare that everything is done, you are clear to close, and that is when the two attorneys, the one for the buyer, the one for the seller, say when they could make the closing and then they get together with the bank and they make a date and then you go with your down payment now before the closing you have the right to a final walkthrough and what this is is where you will go back to the home that you were purchasing with your realtor and you will look everything over and make sure that if there were any repairs that were required to be done that they were done if you had something major you know, that was required to be done, like the roof or the heating system or something like that, I would recommend that you get your inspector or some licensed person to go back with you and make sure that it was done properly. Um, once you have your home ins uh, final walkthrough done and everything is fine, then you will have a chance to go to your closing. You will be instructed how much money to bring. You will be instructed what form of a check to bring. Most likely it's a cashier's check or now they a lot of title companies require that the funds be wired. They will explain all of this to you as well as your attorney will. Uh, most of the direction will come from your attorney at this whole process. Um, you can call your realtor, they'll try to make you feel better and hold your hand, but in actuality, it is the legal aspect of things that is handled by the attorneys from the time that you go to contract through closing, with the exception of the appraisal when the realtor might provide the comparables and provide access to the property. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. Oh, one other thing, you're going to want to make sure to arrange for utilities to be turned on in your name. The seller has uh, if, if they have oil, they're going to have their final oil reading, they'll have their meter readings, and you will call the same companies, the water company and the power company and the gas or oil company, and, uh, and arrange for them to put things on in your name. I ask the seller to wait through the day of closing rather than close it the morning of in case there's a little hitch that the power won't be turned off, and especially in the middle of winter, that could present a problem. So um, the two realtors and the attorneys will coordinate that and you will be ready for your closing. So that sums it up, post-contract to pre-closing. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call, 516-822-1442, Karen Donovan, Donovan Realty. Thanks for listening, have a great day.